Hello, fun. My name is Nick, and I'm here at the Midwest Regional in Chicago with Team 2338 Gear It Forward. They've had an incredibly successful season so far, already making it to regional finals as captains and winning the Engineering Inspiration Award at the Central Illinois Regional. They have an incredibly powerful robot with a unique under the bumper intake indexer and a shooter which can go up to score into not only the speaker, but also the amp and the trap. All this and more coming up on Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Celebrating 20 years of quality robotics parts and superior service, Animark employees have over 200 years of first-team experience. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Animark.com for high-quality and affordable solutions. Support Fun's content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and Fun members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the Join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. Now we're heading over to Luke to talk about their skirt and frame. Take it away, Luke. All right, so starting off, we decided this year to do Swerve again, same as last year. And this year we decided again to keep with our reinforced frame. So last year it worked out well for us. We basically have a super frame that goes on top of our normal frame right here. And we've seen a lot of damage this year on other robots, on Chief Delphi, as well as in our own testing in the shop. We managed to bend part of our kit bot frame uh, doing our own testing. And so we've decided to go with our reinforced frame. It helps protect our modules. We've chosen not to go with inverted modules this year. And it also keeps our frame intact. And then below the frame, we have these skirts right here. And so they wrap around the entire robot and they keep notes from getting in underneath our uh, frame into our swerve modules. The notes will just bounce off of the skirts uh, and keep moving down the field. So we can just run into them. This lets us keep our bumpers at a uniform height. Uh, it makes, makes it easier for us to manufacture our bumpers and it also lets us, uh, we believe the bumpers will be stronger. And then finally, the skirts are angled in at the front of the robot. So we can just uh, hit a note right here and the note will get angled into our collector. Um, and so that's really useful. And we can also, uh, since we have the bumper right here, we can mash up against the wall, get a note stuck between us and the wall and just stray forward or stray left and right until the note is inside of our intake. And then handing off the intake to Aiden. All right, so for our intake, we decided to do an under the bumper collector. And we kind of have two sets of wheels right here. The first one is uh, compliant wheels. And then the bottom one is, uh, carbon fiber, is a carbon fiber roller wrapped in surgical tubing. And you can see on this uh, front set of compliant wheels, the front two are bigger. That's so we could get more initial grip on the note. And then once it starts passing through, we only have the smaller ones to the side, which is the compression we want when we're passing through our robot. So once we're in the rollers, if you move up here, you can see it goes into the indexer. And there's these passive rollers here that just help keep the note where we want it to be. And then these centering blocks help move the note to the center of the indexer to this next set of rollers. And this set of rollers is perfectly spaced out with these sets of rollers. So there is uh, no dead zone with our note. And then these set, this set of rollers brings it into this set of rollers, which is the same carbon fiber wrapped in surgical tubing, just not all the way around, which brings it into our shooter, which Jimmy can tell you more about. Well, one thing I guess about this collector and indexer, is there any way, is there any particular way you like came to this design? It seems, it seems very, it looks like it works very well. I'm just curious, is there like any particular testing you saw that led you to this design or um, any sort of like things you were specifically aiming for? So we prototyped several different types of collectors and indexers and this is kind of just the final result of what we saw was best like we initially tested i talked about the compliant wheels having just all small wheels or all big wheels and we found that this works the best uh these passive rollers we saw that the note was kind of hanging down or sagging sometimes so we added the set of passive rollers so we make it through this next one so just uh, lots of iterations of the collector and indexer caused us to come up with this final result. Very cool. Now we're heading over to Jimmy to talk about their scoring mechanism. Take it away, Jimmy. All right, so this is our shooter that we've been running this year. So this whole shooter can angle itself up and down. We have these 42 tooth versa pulleys in the back. So it angles, it pivots around the bottom roller of our shaft, our shooter, excuse me. So that way it gives us a really good degree of freedom when we're going up and down. If you want to demo that right now. 
So you can see that when we enable and don't have a broken driver station, <laughs> uh, when we do that, you can see how our rest goes up and it pivots around our bottom shaft right here. It keeps everything nice and stable and it keeps everything nice and compact. We don't have to have a bunch of extra systems to make sure we can just angle our shooter. And we found it to be really consistent. It doesn't have a lot of backlash. We found it to be just a really good solution to um, angle our shooter. And then moving on to our rollers in the back, like Aiden said, we have more carbon fiber rollers and we have a really specific spacing here, just so when we have a note go through, it doesn't get caught. So I guess we can actually feed a note now. So I'll grab this real quick. So look, if we can feed a note through real quick. So you can see as we feed a note, it goes right into here and you can see how it's only grabbing on these two points. So that way when we spit it out, so if you can spit, you see how it only touches these for a little bit and that allows it to just not get dragged down by it and makes this motor work as efficiently as possible. And speaking of these, we have we went with these stealth wheels. So they found they had a really good amount of grip and they didn't tear up the notes too bad. And all, this whole shooter re rests on a two-stage elevator. So we can demo that right now as well. So that bottom stage is driven up by this chain down here and the top stage is driven up by the string right here. That's tension with this tensioner that we have right down here. This is a uh, design that we started doing in 2019 and we found that it worked really well back then. We haven't had any issues with it in terms of reliability and it goes up nice and smooth. And you can also see that it's angled on this side, it's angled about 14 degrees out. So that allows us for these rollers to press up against the stage when we climb. And it also allows us to be right next to the amp when we go up an amp. So when we amp, you see how, you'll see how our elevator goes up and our wrist goes out and we shoot it straight down. And we found that the shooting it straight down gives us a really nice angle and we haven't had much issue with that. And then finally, in terms of trapping, first of all, we'll have our climber go up. This is made out of nice half inch polycarbonate and uses a winch to pull it down and some surgical tubing to pull it straight up. So if you want to show that, you'll see it comes up to this good spot. This is right where the chain will be and that's completely automated. We don't have to do any manual control of that. And then after that, the elevator will come up. And you can see it goes all the way up to height limit and this is as high as we can go and then what will happen is we will push against the stage with these rollers and it'll put us nice and square so if you want to bring the climber down now you'll see that this falls a little bit and that's how we don't exceed height limit and then you can see that it shot it up and then angled forward a little bit so that'll shoot the note up onto the ledge and then these cams will push the bottom of the note or allow it to slip into the trap and that's worked to be really reliable for us. We haven't really had any issues in terms of our trap. It's been pretty consistent. And we also have these spring pins here. So you can see that we're disabled now and we're still resting up here. So we added these so that when we disable, this doesn't come crashing down. So we can push down on this and it's not gonna move anywhere. And it turned out to be, and we just did that. So we didn't basically do a backflip at the end of the match. That isn't really good for you. So. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Garrett Ford. I wish you the best of luck going into the rest of this event. You've had an incredibly strong season so far, and I'm hoping you all the best. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah, thank you. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Celebrating 20 years of quality robotics parts and superior service, Animark employees have over 200 years of first-team experience. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to animark.com for high-quality and affordable solutions.